Hey, and welcome to Worth Mending. I'm Alicia, and today I'm going to be weaving a little tiny tapestry using our Swift Darning Loom. Definitely click back through and watch part one if you haven't seen it yet. You can watch how I set this weave up and how I made my first color block. This is where we ended up. For my next bit here, I wanted to work um, all of these kind of in a diagonal. So instead of doing these short rows, I want to be able to just work back and forth like this. And I did learn from that last pink wrap that it is not worth it to shove this guy way too full. So I'm just going to go until there's barely any of that hook peeking out. Like right here. So this time I'm aiming for kind of a stripe going up on an angle. Since this brown is so much darker than those just off-white warps, I would really like to bury them the best I can. Let's see how I do. I think I'm going to start striping, so I'm going to add some green. Maybe this section and then also that next short row section will have these three colors all striped together. Maybe not. We'll see how this goes. I wrapped this green shuttle kind of tight so the belly's a little fat. It is tricky. It's it is going to be tricky to get through these first couple of rows, but I'm going to make it work, obviously. Obviously. I don't know how to keep these warp threads evenly spaced as I'm weaving, so that's something to learn and work on. They keep bunching up at little intervals like this. And the third shuttle color. I'm also curious how this edge is going to turn out just the way that I'm switching between colors here because I can't really see it yet. I may have to do something better with weaving these colors together on that edge so that they don't get too loopy, but I truly don't know. <laughs> now I'm just getting into a really basic back and forth again without any short rows, but since I built up that little mound at the bottom there, it looks like it's crooked, so this might be an interesting effect. I wonder if these are too loose. They're kind of starting to curve out a little bit. Edges are tricky. So floppy. <laughs> I 
really need to start bringing this stripe down to its natural conclusion here. So maybe one more row in green, and then we're going to reevaluate and see what the heck we're doing with our lives here. Because that edge is real wonky. Like it's almost like a style choice. It's so wonky. I'm sure anyone who has any weaving skill though is like, ah, that, that needs work. But like, if you don't, you just say, oh, sweet curves, right, right, right? <laughs> I'm going to get into these short rows, these straight rows again now. And I was at first thinking about making them some colored stripes as well, but um, I think they're just going to be that darker pink. So it's kind of sloppy, but... Um, Again, uh, it's my first try, so I'm just trying to be easy on myself. It's tricky, though. It is hard. Holy cats, it's hard to be easy on yourself. Please leave any tips on that in the comments. I feel like I need to share this trick at any given opportunity. So making it easier to thread a thick yarn through a relatively small hole, just grab a piece of paper, fold it in half, slip your yarn inside of that, and then pull it through. Easy peas. Fingers crossed I can keep this edge a little bit less wonky. Load up this pink shuttle again. Now that that short end is too short to work with. Now that I'm back to using the shuttle, I won't be able to attach this pink to the rest of the weaving, but hopefully that's all right. Obviously I'm just super eyeballing all of this. I don't know any better. I truly just don't know any better at this point. So this will be funny later, like when I'm better at this, I'm sure to look back on and see how completely chaotic this little tapestry was. For now I'm just way too in it. All right, I'm back here just finishing up the light pink. I'm just working on this little area right here in sort of a triangle shape. I'm also kind of trying to match this curve to maybe make that look intentional as well. Not sure how it's gonna go, but doesn't hurt to try, right? I'm squishing everything a lot more than I want it to be in my finished tapestry here because I just want to get in as many of these shuttle passes as I can. Obviously it's a lot wider than a needle so I'm not able to get the yarn as close to the hooks as I could if I was using a needle. That's looking pretty good to me, so just going to poke that all down, make sure it's kind of even. And then before I take it off the hooks, 
I cut this piece of driftwood so that it'll fit here. So I'm just going to wiggle this in between all of my loops before I take it off of the loom here while everything is still under tension. I feel like this is a better way than um, trying to work with all the floppy little loops. But if you have a different experience, I would love to hear about it. And that is where I'm going to leave it for today. So please join me for part three where I will finish up by weaving in the ends on this project, creating a fringe, and hanging it. See you then!